I'm Jay and welcome to the Camden Stitch. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. Um, my name's Jay and this is my channel The Camden Stitch and I can hear my door blowing because it started to go a bit windy outside but I wanted to get a bit of air in the room so uh, I'm sorry about that if you can hear the banging. Right, I am... I'm gonna close it because it's annoying me. Today I'm joining in with a new hashtag that myself and some other sewing vloggers have come up with. Um, me and Laura, who vlogs as a specky seamstress, I can't say it, I'm too lispy, specky seamstress. Laura, your name's too hard for me to pronounce. Um, she is on YouTube as the specky seamstress. I have both recorded a video that we're releasing today and a lot of other vloggers are participating in this. The hashtag is called So Many Questions. Um, some of them about sewing, some of them are about what you do outside sewing, you as a person, and um, we just thought it'd be a fun way of getting to know each other. There's a list which I've posted in the description box of 40 questions. If you're a sewing vlogger, then you don't have to wait to be tagged, you can just join in. So have a look at the questions, choose 10 of them, and post a video. Um, and make sure you tag so many questions and if you post it on social media it would be really great if you could also use the hashtag so many questions thank you and so today um i'm going to answer my own 10 questions which i have chosen at random but the first one i get asked all the time is whereabouts are you from nobody can really place my accent i'm from sheffield i lived there until i was um about 25 when I moved to Barnsley for work for a little bit but obviously still in York, Yorkshire and then I moved to Oxford where I studied and then Cambridge for a few years where I did some more studies and then I came home and um, lived back in Sheffield for a, quite a few years for doing family sort of stuff and then when I was nearly 40 I'd always wanted to live in London and my personal circumstances had come about that I didn't have any ties to the north anymore and I just decided hey I'm gonna do it and it was to be honest it wasn't difficult it was really the best decision I've ever made and as soon as I came down here I was like what took you so long but obviously life circumstances took me so long you know things sometimes get in the way of where you think you'll be and what you think you'll be doing but yeah I came to London when I was 39 nearly five years ago and I've lived in Camden, Camden ever since and it's my adopted home and I absolutely love it and um, so that is where I'm from. What's your dream sewing machine? I'm really really pleased I chose this question to answer because I wanted to have a chat with you lot about what sewing machines you've got um, because I bought a Janome D DKS 100 so I wrote a blog about it, a review not long after I first got it I absolutely loved it it was brilliant but I have found now that I'm sewing more that there are certain sewing tasks that maybe I would like to um, get a machine that is a little bit more sophisticated and can handle different types of fabrics a bit better um, don't get me wrong for everyday sewing I choose to use my Janome and I love it but um, not long ago I actually bought a faff because I wanted to use the IDT which uh, I can't remember what it stands for what IDT stands for but it basically means that it's a dual feed so that as the lower feed dogs move the fabric along um, there are some feed dogs that attach to the upper foot to your presser foot and they actually move the fabric through at the same rate so what that means is that you don't ever get those um, kind of ripples when you're sewing like a curved hem sometimes the presser foot used to push it along the top and used to get like a, a, an excess of fabric at the end of your seam um, or your seams, say you were sewing stripes, your seams might be misaligned because the fabric was feeding through at two different rates, the upper and lower fabric. And so um, the faff feeds it with the IDT, feeds it through at the same rate. And I've been enjoying using that, but the faff that I bought was a second hand one and it's quite old and it doesn't have a an automatic thread cutter on and it doesn't have a couple of other things as well. So I think I'm going to trade them both in and upgrade to a super super posh machine and I've looked at various ones and the thing is with the FAF IDT is they are now out of patent for it which means that other other sewing man machine manufacturers have been able to release their own versions of the dual feed so um, you don't if you want that feature you don't have to buy a FAF uh, one of the things that 
slightly annoys me about the faff is that the feet that you've got for Janome don't fit faffs. Um, I think Janome feet fit quite a range of other machines. Um, it's quite a standard presser foot and I've got loads of really useful presser feet like one for applying bias binding, blind hems, edge stitching feet and each foot is quite expensive. They're not all, the ones that I've got aren't all the Janome proper ones but a few of them are and some of them like my Janome ruffler foot was, I don't know, 43 quid or something. It was quite a lot of money so I don't want to just change to a different machine and then you might think that you're getting a good deal on a sewing machine but if you've got to spend another two three hundred pounds just in presser feet then you know it adds up to a lot more money so um i would quite like to stick with janome i find the dks super super easy and intuitive to use and so the one that i was looking to upgrade upgrading to is the janome mc 6700 p and I'll post a little picture of it here so you can see what it's like. And it's a semi-industrial machine. Uh, and that means that some of the tension dials are on the front of the machine. And it's so super, super fast. Um, but it's computerised, unlike uh, ordinary industrial machines. Which means it's got a lot of the features that you get used to uh, on sort of domestic computerised machines. So programming stitch length, um, being able to set certain stitches and things like that, um, having the auto thread cutter, all these things, it's basically got a lot of bells and whistles that I would quite like to use. Um, if I sell both of my existing machines, then I might be able to upgrade to that. But I was wanting to speak to people because obviously it's a massive purchase. Hear about your own machines, what you've got that they uh, that you like, what you don't like. I'm struggling with both my machines doing buttonholes. Both of them are automatic buttonholes and the sensor seems to be way too um, sensitive because w if you seem to have any... F obviously when you're sewing a button placket sometimes it's, it's uneven, especially when you get towards the bottom of the button placket and you've got the folded fabric underneath, you've got seam allowances underneath and if you seem to get it anywhere near the button sensor then the button sensor seems to, um, the machine seems to sort of go rogue um, and start freestyling your button, which, your buttonhole which drives me mad so if you've got a machine, especially one that does good buttonholes and you really like it and you recommend it then please let me know in the comments, I will love you forever How do you store your patterns? Well, pretty soon I'm going to actually need to rent a storage unit to store my patterns because I've got too many. Um, my first job was working in libraries and I love cataloguing things. I don't know if I went into that job because of that love or that job instilled in me that love, but the Dewey Decimal System, I'm all over it, right? So the way that I store my patterns is I use a pattern storing app called Pattern Box, which again, I'll post a link to below. and. Um, it allows you to take a photograph, just a snapshot of the front and back of your patterns and save it and then you can go in and scroll through. You can save it in various categories, dresses, um, out, outerwear, menswear, things like that. You can create your own categories as well. Um, and so I store things in categories and then you can stroll through, scroll through them and you can visually see at a glance how, um, which patterns you've got. It's got some limitations, it doesn't allow you to search by keywords. I would like to be able to, for instance, put in a keyword like wrap bodice dress, so that if I want to search for something with a wrap bodice, even if it's a jumpsuit or whatever, I could type in the word wrap and that would come up. This um, app doesn't allow that. I have messaged them about it, the developer about it, but they've not got back to me, um, which is a bit annoying because it is a paid for app, it's not free, it's a fiver. For me, it's worked really well. It's starting to reach its limitations as my pattern sash grows out of control just because it's not as searchable and there becomes too many to scroll through visually. Um, I'm getting towards that point now, but I haven't found a better one. So that's what I use at the moment. Um, and then what I do is I store my patterns numerically. If they're independent patterns, I store them by the name of the pattern company and then the name of the pattern. So and one day I, I will show you, I'll give you a bit of a look through my stash, but I've got, I think it must be running into the thousands of patterns now. So 
yeah, things are starting to get out of control. I have started selling the patterns that I don't want on my eBay shop and I will post a link below in case you want to go and have a look through my patterns. <music>